Welcome to the Financial Freedom Secrets Show. This is your host, Jackson Milan, the Wealth Mentor, helping business owners create financial freedom faster by mastering the language of money. Want to see how well you're tracking towards financial freedom? Complete our 40-point financial performance scorecard at wealthhealthcheck.com.au. That's wealthhealthcheck.com.au. The average score for most business owners is 18 out of 40. So complete the scorecard now and see how well you're tracking towards financial freedom. G'day guys, Jack Milan, the Wealth Mentor, and we're here for another episode of the Financial Freedom Secrets Show. Uh, I'm joined by a, a new local friend of mine, Sam Harrop uh, from uh, Business Maximizer Coaching. Uh, it was pretty uh, pretty funny how we uh, we come to meet Sam. I uh, got a tradie out to do some quotes on some renovations. He had a phenomenal process, some amazing collaborative. I'm like, this guy's worked with a great business coach. And I asked him, like, who you worked with, mate? This is phenomenal. And he said, I'm working with this guy called Sam who lives in Cannes. Uh, and I'm like, I've got to connect with this guy. And uh, like the, the rest is history. So, uh, Sam, how you doing, my friend? Yeah, good, man. Good to catch up. And it was. It was an interesting uh, phone call when you phoned me and he'd already told me about it. So quite funny. It's, uh, it's, it's a funny, funny, funny the, world. He was though. actually on the phone. Uh, I was, he was on a call earlier today as well. So talking about his sales process and updating it. I love it, mate. But you've definitely uh, worked your magic there. So, Sam, just for the people who might not know you, tell us a little about you and uh, your business, mate. Sure. Okay. So um, as you can tell from my very non-Australian accent, I immigrated from Johannesburg, South Africa in 2008. Uh, Back in South Africa, I'd started, bought, built and sold 11 different businesses of my own. Um, Came over to Australia, initially actually flying balloons on the tablelands, um, but had never really worked full-time for somebody in my life. So it was just a question of time before I started my own business. Um, went into business coaching, and then over the years refined a really simple model um, around how people can grow a strong, profitable business. That's how Business Maximizer Coaching came about. I realized the guys that we could make the biggest impact and work really well with were service-based business owners. And over time, that sort of changed now to more specifically tradies and builders. Um, Do still do a bit with uh, business professionals. Um, but that's where we base. That's where we're getting really, really good results for our guys. Um, yeah, so that's that's me in a nutshell. I love it, mate. Fantastic. We work with a lot of tradies, and it's great because they're hard workers. They take advice, and they're they're not afraid of, of hard work, which is awesome. Uh, but it's interesting. Um, we're in this kind of vacuum at the moment where they're spoiled for choice of opportunity, right? They've got opportunity coming out in years, but there's a lot of them that are that are going through a lot of challenges, mate. So. From being on the coalface, working with a lot of these guys, what are the biggest challenges that a trade business owners are facing at the moment? All right, so we, if we think about it, like from a business perspective, there's, there's only three things guys need to do, right? They need to get the work, you know, the right work from the right people at the right price. They need to be able to do the work right and get it right the first time. And then they need to keep the cash on the way through and then they can catch up with you and do all amazing things with their money. So where we're seeing it is if guys are really good at getting the work and doing their work, they end up but not good at keeping the cash. They end up being busy but broke. They get to the end of the year and they go, shit, man, we worked so hard, but where's the money? So that's the first challenge. The second one is a bit around confidence. You know, they, 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 they do the work, um, they keep the cash, but they're not good at getting the work. So it's this feast and famine. And we've seen a change already where as interest rates have started creeping up, um, people have started to slow down. And there's that good old saying, you know, good times breed bad habits. And so all of a sudden, guys are like, oh, the, the inquiry is on coming through. What are we doing? So effective marketing is the next challenge. And, and good sales process. You know, a lot of guys are doing lots and lots of quotes, but not converting. So that, that costs them a lot of time. And then the other one is, they, they're good at getting the work and keeping the cash, but not good at doing the work. So where that shows up is I just can't find good staff. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the reality there is if they're not getting the right work and they're not charging the right money, um, they can't actually afford the staff. But also a lot of guys that get into business are really good at doing the work of the business. Like I cannot teach somebody how to be a better tradesman, right? Like they need to know their trader. Most of them do, but it's the next level up. How do we manage and then how do we lead our team? And how do we become a place where people want to work? So, you know, how do we attract the right staff and then how do we retain them? Um, because, you know, people always say, oh, it's all about the money. 
sure, money is important, but it's not the only thing. You know, people would rather work for somebody for less money than work for, if I can say it, um, an asshole, right? Um, and so it's understanding that and creating a culture where it's a good place to work so we can attract and retain talent. So, yeah, that would be the thing. You know, the guys are either busy and broke, um, there's feast and famine, or they're just burning themselves out because they can't get the right team around them. Makes a lot of sense, mate. Where would you say the vast majority of the people that reach out to you find themselves out of those kind of three scenarios, mate? It, it, it's changing, Jackson. It, it's changing, right? So, so uh, we actually just recently surveyed about 200 uh, tradies, particularly down in, trans, uh, in Townsville for this particular survey, understanding what are their biggest challenges they're facing. First one is not being able to get staff. And we're seeing that starting to change now already. Um, you know, here's the short tip, right, is most people write terrible ads. Um, it's like, if you know, wanted this person, you need to be able to do all of these things. There's nothing in it making them an attractive proposition. So getting and retaining staff, right? So that's that's the one. The second one is their margins are under threat. So we've seen lots of price escalation, lots of sudden price rises. Guys are getting confused between margin and markup and they're just not pricing their jobs correctly. And then what's happening now and picking up is guys are starting to panic a little bit. They're seeing things slow down. And uh, this is a dangerous place to be because if they panic, they'll take on the wrong work for the wrong people. And then they end up just working for free or the passion for what they do dies. Because if you're doing work for people that don't appreciate you and you're doing work that doesn't excite you, life sucks, man. <laughs> so, so that's where, where we're seeing. So we're seeing a slight slowdown now. Um, you know, we've said to guys, a lot of our clients during um, COVID were making really good money. You know, the demand for what was going on, there was a lot of money circulating around. People were spending quite freely. Um, and this was an opportunity to maximize profits. Now it's around consolidating um, and still being quite particular about the work, going, is this the right work for me? And when we talk about that, it's, it's right work for your business. You know, it depends on the work that you can do really well. But also what's really important is that your team does well. Because if it's all based around your skills, guess what, buddy? You're the one doing the work, right? Um, and as the business goes through stages, so, you know, we've spoken about this sort of seven stages to a business. Well, I, I look at how a business grows. Um, those roles change. You know, initially you start out, you're the tradesman. You know how to do that work. You go out there and you prove yourself. And, and even that is a big step, right? There's, how many people do you meet, Jackson, that are going to start a business one day? They've got this great idea. Like there's, there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of them. But only a select few have the guts to go out and actually start their business, right? And that's what we call the startup stage. And it's an important stage because they can prove that they, they can prove that they can get the work, they can do the work, and hopefully they keep some of the cash. The next level up is then what we call a, so seed is an idea. Startup, they actually take that challenge. They're doing it part-time or maybe a bit, but then most businesses get stuck in the survival stage where they, they're getting the work and they're doing the work, but you know they're super, super busy. They're working 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours. Um, money's coming in, money's going out. And they just, that they, their mindset is if I could just, I just need to work a little bit harder. And, and the reality is, if that was the case, they'd be out of there already. And those are the guys that we can help because they, they've proven the concept, they've proven they can work, um, they're willing to do the work. It's just the fine tweaks. Um, and then we get them, I think, actually, Jackson, you mentioned this on one, of your, uh, on one of your videos. I do watch your videos, dude, where this is where people go, oh, I need to get bigger or I need another business, right? And it's like, no, dude. No, you, we're not ready to scale. That's like level six. So we're at level three, survival. Let's get you to the next level, which is level four, which is a stable business. So money's coming in. You, you get down to working maybe 40 hours a week. Um, it's a bit more predictable. You know where you're at. You're making money. So you're paying yourself a market-related wage, and they're still breaking even or a bit of a profit. Then the next level up is what we call a successful business. And this is a lifestyle business. This is a really cool place 
to be. And, and what that is, is the work's predictable. It's highly profitable. Um, you've got a team around you. Life is sweet, right? That's, that's good. We actually joke about it. Um, we call it the five twos. So 200,000 salary, 200,000 profit, two international holidays a year. And you go, why two? Well, if you're going to go overseas, mate, you might as well go for two weeks. That's so four weeks off. Um, it's a 200 series Land Cruiser. I don't know why, but that's like the Rolls Royce of Far North Queensland. So whatever your car is. Um, and then two days a week. And if you've got a business that's working like that, that's a sweet business. Um, but you need to be in that position to go to the next level, which is scale. And that's when you bring on, you, you either bring on multiple branches or you diversifying, whatever the case is. And that's tough. You go back to working over time again. It's, it's hard graft. But the payoff is, is amazing because you end up with what we call a significant business. And often the case here is we're pre-planning that. We've already identified either you're going to scale it in terms of maybe franchise it or license it, or you've already identified somebody in the market that is going to potentially buy your business at a later stage. They might not even know that they're going to buy your business, but that's what you're setting your business up for. Most people we coach, we coach or work with go from survival to successful, so up to level five, and they're happy. You know, they it's a lifestyle business. They, they're able to pick up the kids from school. They're able to go on holiday. They're doing work they love. Life is good. Because mm. let's be honest, bigger is not always better. Better no, is better. Definitely right? not. Yeah, it's interesting. So, These you know, people go to survival, and they think that scale is going to get them out of that, and then what that ultimately leads them closer to is fail. And uh, it, I call it the sale tax. And that they try and throw money at their problems as they're growing and they're, they've outgrown their systems. There may be there's no systems that even exist. And my biggest frustration here, Sam, is particularly up here in far north Queensland, tradies, most tradies don't have systems, um, particularly the ones that haven't worked with you yet, right, um, is that they turn up whenever they want, if they turn up at all, and they you're constantly chasing them, there's no communication, and it's just they feel like they're doing you a favour. And it's because they don't have this system that you've spoken about. They don't have this pathway, this proven roadmap to success. But they also feel like they've got a monopoly because the reality is good tradespeople are hard to come by in the region. So there's like this dichotomy. Um, so, mate, I, you obviously you're up in far north Queensland. And by implementing this system, like, is it a magnifier effect, particularly in the regions when you implement this framework in a business where your competitors don't even know this stuff exists. Dude, so this, this is a really exciting thing, right, is years ago when I used to coach, I used to just coach one business from each sector, blah, 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 competitive, all of this nonsense. And we've got rid of that, changed our mindset, and it's more around this abundance mindset. And we've created this tribe now. We've got 50 members. I know there are guys out there that got way more, but we've got a really nice community. And when we bring guys into our community, we go, are they a good fit, right? And what's happening now is there's this sharing of ideas. So we've created this, there's clarity. People know exactly what they need to do. There's certainty because they're seeing other guys getting results. But then there's this community. And what's happening is, so the tradesman that you met, right? Um, right now, he is kicking goals. Like he's, he started off doing the hard grind. He was hard, he was, you know, how many hours do I need to put into this Sam a week? I said, look, if you can put in between three to five, it's going to make a difference, right? Anyway, he ground through it. He's now got like 10 hours a week to work on his business, which means things have sped up even more to the point that I'm like, slow down, dude. Like you've got to bring everybody with you, right? Yeah. But what's happening as well is people in our community are reaching out to him and going, hey, what are you doing? Oh, you know, charging for a quote. Okay. Imagine you got a tradesman that's going to arrive, but they, 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 they communicate with you, they arrive on time, and they say to you, look, hey, Jackson, would you like an estimate or would you like a detailed full breakdown quote, right, where you know exactly what to expect? Now, it's a bit of a qualifying thing because if you say, no, 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 I'm just, yeah, I'm just getting three quotes, I'm, I'm never going to be the cheapest, right? No, that's the thing. But if you turn around and say, hey, I'm willing to pay for it, now you're going to pay, let's say, a nominal fee, but – you pay 300 bucks, but you're getting a thousand bucks worth of value. We've already yes. started a relationship here. Now, when I present this to a couple of our members, particularly our new members, they're like, no, can't, 
can't do that. And I've got other guys going, hell yeah, this is what we're doing. And people are turning around going, how? And they were asking questions, right? Because I'm not a tradesman. I'm a businessman. If I walk into the house, Jackson, with a drill, a screwdriver, or a hammer, my wife is like, whatever you're about to do, it'll be cheaper to call somebody else. Just please call somebody else, right? So they're now turning around going, these guys are doing it. They're getting the results. So what's what we're seeing around the region and around our community is things are accelerating and it's a win-win. The good tradesmen are making good money, but they're delivering awesome value. And so for the customers, they know they're getting good value. What's the biggest frustration as a customer? Guys don't show up. They don't communicate. They leave a mess. And there's always hidden surprises. Yes. Right? Now, if you have that peace of mind, guys are kicking goals. So we, we're getting amazing feedback from our clients' clients, our members' clients. But also, like, you, you're a great testimonial, right? Like, you experienced it. I know you're in the game. We, we, we've got a, a coach in common. Um, but you, on the outside, you know, and you can see yeah. that stuff. People that don't know that just go, wow, how amazing is that? This guy showed up on time. He was professional. He presented me with a proper proposal, not just a scribbled piece of paper with some numbers on it. You know, it's cool. It's, it's really, really cool. It makes such a big difference, mate. Like obviously, in the world of wealth, like we're all about building passive income and creating assets. And business is the best asset, right? Like all of the richest people in the world have typically got there because of business. But there is this yep. stark contrast between the small business owner and this kind of rich lister. And it's all about creating the assets. And that's the interesting thing. As soon as I saw that collateral, those assets that you you help that, that trader create, um, go, wow, this is immediate value. Um, because it's interesting, as a consumer, I want two things. I want peace of mind and I want certainty. And I don't. Yes. those two things are the most valuable things to me and I will, I will pay a premium for those two things. And if I don't have those two things, it means I'm taking a leap of faith and the amount I'm prepared to invest for a leap of faith is substantially lower than what I will pay when I have that peace of mind and certainty. And it's just that there's nothing that feels worse than the uncertainty of putting your trust in a, an expert, whatever they may be, a tradesperson or whatever, and not knowing what they're going to do. Yeah. Oh, man, we're drinking the same Kool-Aid. That's it. <laughs> I, I agree 100%, man. And, and it, it is exciting to see, you know, the difference between an okay business and a good business, like often people go, what's the one thing? Well, if there was one thing, it would be around mindset, being open to that there are better ways. That's the one thing. But the better ways, there's numerous better ways. And again, you know, using that analogy of compounding, it's the little things done consistently that make a big difference. And we've got our model, you know, getting the work, doing the work, keeping the cash. When you look at those three circles in any business, that there's one circle that will always be bigger than the others and there will always be one that's smaller than the others. And that sort of dictates what strategies we're going to use. But I also like to use the analogy of um, like from martial arts is the first time you go around that circle, you've gone from white belt to yellow belt to orange belt to green belt to blue belt. And so every time you go around, it gets better. Where's yeah. the starting point? Most businesses that I look at, They're doing the wrong work for the wrong people, which means they can't charge and they're at the wrong price. And we turn around and say to people, hey, let's work out, you know, what's the work you're really good at? And it doesn't matter whether they're an electrician, a plumber, or a builder. I often joke with my builders. I go, you know what their problem is? They go, what? I go, you're a builder. And they're like, what do you mean? I go, well, you can build a whole new house. You can build a little bit of a house. You can do a deck. You can do a roof. You can do a bathroom. You can do all of these things. What's the stuff that you're really, really good at? What's the stuff that you excites you? And where can we make money? And so I've got guys that do new builds. I've got guys that do large renos, small renos. I've got a guy that just loves doing decks. I've got a guy that loves doing bathrooms. And people like sometimes people go, bathrooms, I hate bathrooms. Why do you hate bathrooms? Are they small jobs? There's lots of trades, um, not that much money, whatever the case is. Okay, well, what do you like? Oh, I prefer working with big projects, whatever the case is. Now you speak to my bathroom guy, he goes, oh, love it. Get creative. I've got the most amazing trades. I've got a system and process that gets them in. 
He says, I don't have to hang around ages. If I, you know, I generally qualify my clients that I'm in and I'm out and I've got paid. So one man's trash is another man's treasure. Yes. Um, and essentially, I think from going from an okay business to a good business then enables business owners to then have money to invest elsewhere. Yes. Um, you know, um, I wrote that book, Small Business, Big Exit, and there's some scary stuff behind that. Like 84% of businesses listed for sale don't sell. On average, those that do sell, sell for one and a half times earnings. And people turn around and say, well, I've got a great business. Why would I sell it for, i just keep it for another 18 months and I've made exactly. that money. So they don't sell it, right? It's the people that don't have good businesses that sell them. So often I look at it, I don't know, I'd be interested in your opinion on this, is a businesses, some businesses sell, right? A valuable business is a valuable business. But if we can use that business as a vehicle to create wealth, which we can then invest into other areas, whether we sell that business or not later on doesn't matter because um, the best time to sell a business is when you want to, not when you have to, right? right? And you want a strong, profitable business. But you've able to invest into property or into shares and you've got a, a portfolio. This is where, you know, you and I have been speaking um, because then it doesn't matter. It, 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 it's only one part of the equation. Exactly. You nailed it, mate. I think the idea is, and my philosophy here is that you should always be positioning your business for sale. And, and but the idea is even if you never want to sell, because what's interesting, mate, those, the amount of conversations I've had from business owners who've burnt out, like, Jackson, I've had enough. I want to get out. I'm putting the business for sale. I'm like, sorry, mate, your business isn't worth anything. No one's going to buy that. It's, it's a dumpster fire. And yeah. the idea is that you, if you don't want to sell your business because it's under management and it's got systems and processes and it's, it's, it's effortless, and to the best of your ability, then it's far more valuable because that's what somebody wants to buy. And the idea is that you never have to sell it because you've built wealth outside in terms of property and shares where your business is just cream on top. And you should never have to rely on your business in order to create financial freedom. But the interesting thing, look, I'm an active acquirer of businesses. Um, We acquire businesses all of the time. Um, However, I've I've never acquired a, a trade business. What makes a trade business valuable if it ever does go up for sale, Sam? What does a potential acquirer look for in a trade business? Okay. So there's, there's an acronym. It doesn't quite spell correctly, but if, if your listeners want to write it down, it's, it's PACIFI. So P-A-C-F-I. F-I together, right? So P stands for profits, okay? And everybody talks about a business selling on a multiple. It's a multiple of profits. So the first one is profits. Second one is A is assets. And those are the assets that's around the systems and processes and stuff that you created. You've got tangible and intangible assets, right? So that's assets. Then the next one is C, which is cash flow. And there's three types of cash flow, investment cash flow, financing cash flow. But the key one here is operational cash flow. If you're going to sell your business for a reasonable amount of money, the person that buys your business is going to need to have get finance to meet those finance requirements, they need strong operational cash flow. Otherwise, the bank or the investor will not lend the money. So that's cash flow. Then the next one is independence. And this is where it does get tricky as a trade-related business, okay? Because it need, ideally, it can be independent of you, but it, does mean, it doesn't mean necessarily um, that the person buying the business doesn't have to work in it. They may choose to, but that's it. So it's independent of you. Any one team member, any one supplier, and any significant concentration of customers. So those are sort of yes. areas that you're looking at. And then the F I stands for first impressions, right? In other words, what does your business look like from the outside? Now, look, most franchises have got a bad rap over the last 10, 15 years. And you know what, Jackson? Deservedly so. Most franchises out there are there to make the franchisor rich, not the franchisees. There's, there's a few yes. exceptions, but as a general rule of thumb, I think we've lost our way there. I think that's quite great. But you want it to look like a franchise. You want it to look good from the outside, right? And there's a whole model around that. But those things, assets, cash flow, independence, and first impression, those four things are what will determine the multiplier. That will determine whether the multiplier is one, two, three, or four. You yeah. know, and a lot of people out there 
get confused. They go, okay, well, I'll sell it for a multiple of two or three plus the business assets. And I'm like, no, no, the assets are used to generate the profit. So pick one. Now, exactly. valuing a business is a bit of smoke and mirrors. It, it's yes. way harder than, you know, certain industries, um, you know, accounting firms, financial planning firms, that's sort of stuff. It's easy. quite easy. There's generally ratios. Yeah. Goodwill um, businesses are challenging. Yeah, correct, correct. So I look at it and go, and, and again, with builders, right, and, and, and tradies, they've got to have the correct qualifications. So yes. th- it does get a little bit confusing. But having said that, we are seeing groups coming in and buying companies, and they are generally paying a, above market value because what's happening is their strategy is they listing them and so there's an opportunity there for a bigger multiple. There's an arbitrage um, opportunity. Co- correct. Yeah, yeah, spot on. Yeah, yeah. So, and then if I don't, if you don't mind, like talking about you, what you're doing, and my understanding of what you're doing is you're you're at a scale to significance level six, level seven. You're not buying different businesses. You're buying businesses that tie into what you do, which makes good yeah. sense because. That's where your mind is. That's where your focus is. If you're going off and buying all random businesses, um, you end up diversifying too much. We only have so much attention span that we can actually spend on stuff. And so we end up missing things. Um, you know, at a later stage, Jackson, they might be saying that you would do. But like my understanding in terms of where you are now is the businesses you're acquiring all going into the same pot, is that correct? Exactly. They're all aligned. They all serve the same customer and they're fixing problems that these customers are already paying or prepared to pay to fix. And it keeps everything singing off the same song sheet, which works phenomenally. Um, This is awesome, mate. Dude, I love that. We've had so much value here, mate. Uh, We could go on for days, I'm sure. Um, But uh, I think this has really given people an insight around the the system, around how do you actually create a profitable and scalable uh, service business how do you start thinking about positioning that business for sale? I think everyone should, and you can reverse engineer your back way back from that. Now, Sam, if anybody's listened to this podcast and uh, they want to get in touch with you, mate, what's the, the best way for them to connect with you? Look, uh, website, Business Maximizer Coaching, so businessmaximizercoaching.com.au, or you can just send me an email, sam at samharrop.com.au. Um, and basically what we do is we just have a quick chat to see if I can or can't help you. If I can't help you, I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. It might be a bookkeeper, it might be a different accountant, it might be saying along those lines. And if I can help you, then we schedule a time to have a more detailed chat. So it's, it's very much around finding a good fit and that we can. I believe I can help you and you believe I can help you as well. So amazing, mate. I'll include those links in the show notes, guys. Make sure that you jump on that. And remember, a good idea in theory remains exactly that, just a good idea until you put it into practice. So make sure that you implement what we've covered today in the show. Uh, Sam, I appreciate you making the time, mate, and I'm looking forward to catching up again soon. Awesome, man. Thanks for your time. Really enjoyed it. Thanks, mate.